So the first two parts of it, uh, advanced editing techniques, uh, we covered all these tools that you see over here. Uh, I was working with the array command. I already completed the rectangular array, but then the next we have to do is work with the polar array, which is right here, the second one. So to work with the polar array, obviously I need to have a center and work my array or copies around the center. For example, if you wanted to do something uh, like what it shows in the picture over here, uh, we can draw a table and then we draw chairs around it, right? So I'll start with a circle uh, of a radius of uh, like four, okay? And then I want to put something on the side, like some chairs. So I'm going to make some rectangular chairs within that much area. So let me just do my little location for my chair. Okay, and then that is one of my chairs. Can move it right to the center. Can have another, like a backrest. Okay, so now I have a table and a chair. Now I want to make sure that I have ten or five chairs on this side. Okay, so we can even make that a little bigger. Uh, I can scale this up. SC, select that. From there, I can give it two times. So let's work with the polar array. Now when I go to the array, I first thing I do is pick the polar array. I have to select the objects which I want to array. Select that and I select that one chair because that's all I want to array. I don't want to array the table, which is the chair. Enter. Then next one I do is pick the center point. Obviously it's important to show where the center point is, right? or else it won't array in the right radius. Center point is the center of the circle. Now the total number items four, instead of four I'm going to take it as maybe six. So I'm pretty much done here. I picked up my polar array, picked up the center point right here, uh, selected the objects, hit the number of points, and hit OK. I can hit preview if I want it, but I know it would work. So that's what it did. It made one, two, three, four, five, six chairs around this table. Now, if I wanted to put a certain design onto my table, okay, so I could, uh, I could use some other tools like, let's see, I'm just gonna use line right now. Okay. I draw just that. Now, I wanted to fill this up or you know what? I won't even do that. I'll just do one line. Get to the circle, get the center. I just make one line. And do ar array, enter. Select objects. I want to make an array of this one. Enter. Pick points. Center is this one. And instead of six, I'm going to give it a hundred. And everything looks okay. I pick my center, select the objects. All I do is hit okay. So now it made that design onto my uh, onto my table, and it already calculates the exact distance. Okay, so we don't need to work with the calculation. It already does that. We just need to put in the number and number right here. Maybe let's do 50 this time. Select objects. I want to select this. You could select one or you know like five or six objects if you want, right? Center point, center. Okay. Okay. So now it made 50 of those at the equal distance. So that's what uh, polar array was. We did rectangular array in the previous uh, tutorial. So you can go and refer to that one. Now let's jump to some more tools. Uh, we've done even the fillet and uh, the chamfer in the previous exercise. So again, you can go and refer to those. Now let's go in some more. Uh, more commands over here, or more tools. Now the first one that you see is change space. Now what the change space does is we are working in um, in the model space and we 
always print from the paper space. But sometimes you would want to take the chair and put it into the paper space rather than having it in the model space. Now, if I try to click on it, you see I cannot select anything. Why? Because it's in the model space. It's behind this little window or a viewport that you see over here. So if I double click in there, now if you see, I can select, because I'm, I'm going through the portal, I can select what's underneath it or what's in the model space. But to move this particular chair, uh, or I have to do is just go in here, click the change space icon, and select my chair. Once that's done, I hit enter, and if you see, now my chair is in the paper space or the layout space. What about the rest of the drawing? I still cannot select it. Why? Because it's in the model space. Now, if I could jump to the model space, this chair should disappear from there. See? That one chair disappeared. Where did it go? It came over here. You cannot select anything else. Okay? So that's how you would move stuff from the model space to the paper space if you ever needed to. The next one we have is the lengthen command. We go back here. Now, for lengthen, I'm just going to explode my whole drawing. See, when I exploded it, no, it's not a rectangle anymore, it's just lines. So, uh, I go to the lengthen. It says select object to lengthen. But first, before I do that, I'm going to type P for percentage. As in, how much percentage do I want to lengthen? Right now it's 100, so I'm going to give it 200. Enter. And I click it. You see? Depends on which side I click, it's going to lengthen on that side. If I would have clicked there, it would lengthen there. Okay? So that's what lengthen does. It just increases the length to whatever uh, number that you get, whatever percentage that you get. Okay? Same goes to every single line. So I hope you followed that length and command. I really don't use it that much, but it's up to you, so you could use it if you find any use for it. Then let's go to uh, the align command. Now this align command is uh, pretty important, pretty handy. If sometimes you would want to rotate your whole uh, building or the object with respect to a certain angle or a line. Like for instance, I have a line over here. And I want to move this this chair uh, right onto this line. So how would I do that? So a couple ways. There are a couple ways of doing it, but the best way is a line because I don't have to worry about finding the angle to turn this chair to make it like that. So I'll do a line A L, or obviously I can click from here. Where is that? Right there. I click, uh, select the objects. This is what I want to align. Enter. Select the first point, source point, for its destination. Second source, anywhere on this line would be the second destination, right? Doesn't matter. Hit enter. Now it's asking me scale object based on alignment points. I will hit no because it will make the chair bigger. It will scale it to that size. I hit no, enter. See? It rotated that chair and put it up here and it aligned to this reference line. Now if I did the same thing but instead of scaling I hit yes then it would change size. So let's go AL align, select the chair, enter, first point, first point destination, second source point, second source point destination, enter. Save the line. Now this time I'm going to say yes for scaling. Y, enter. See, it's scale. It even scales the chair to that distance that I want it. So uh, you could use it in a variety of different uh, times that you would find help for this tool. So extremely useful. So I would say uh, you have to go over again and try to understand how the line tool works. The next one is the break. Now you just click on it, uh, click, and specify the second point. See, it broke that line. Now, if I wanted to go reverse, I could use the join to, to join that same line. See, not one and two lines, right? So I click one line, I click the second line, I hit enter, and it joins it. Okay, see, it's one line right now. So how to do it again? Break, 
click and give the second point of reference so that one line converted into two different lines and if I want to join them back, back up I just go join click on the first line click on the second line hit enter okay then we have break at a point like for instance if I want to break this line which is one single line in one point in two two lines okay that's one line that's two lines second line so how did I do that I just go here just go break at a point select the object and then pick where I want to break it I want to break it right there okay so see that's one and then this is another one so we're done with these uh, some more which is called uh, the edit polyline edit spline you could use you could edit and modify these uh, by just clicking on the object you don't even need to go to these tools like if I have a polyline I could modify it just by clicking on it moving the nodes clicking on it moving the nodes the easiest way of modifying but even you could go in from here and do the same exact thing then the next one is edit uh, edit spline so spline is over here I'm going to draw the spline now if I wanted to edit this line all I have to do is just click on there and then just move my notes okay it's as easy as that so you would be using this next one is the edit hatch now when we hatched something uh, using the H command using the H command pick points and I hash that I could modify the hat by just double clicking on it and it opens the same exact window okay I could change the pattern I could change the angle I could do anything and everything that I wanted okay so that's what edit hatch does now there's one more over here called as uh, bring to front send to back bring above send under the object what this does is it's like AutoCAD follows the layering, right? So sometimes you want to bring something up from another layer uh, and give it more importance because you want it to be uh, on the upper layer. So all you have to do is, uh, for example, let me let me just go to another layer and hatch this. Pick points, select solid. Okay, so I've hashed this a certain color. I'm going to make another rectangle here, but in a different layer. Maybe that. And hatch it by that layer, pick points there, enter. Or I'm going to move it out first and then hatch it. Hatch pick points okay now if I move it uh, over here now see looks like this is on top right the line the green line is on top of the red now I could select that I could even right click and go to the same exact place I right click on my screen and go draw order where did I go draw order bring to front okay now the red is in the front I could select that right click draw order send to back see now the red is gone behind so that's how you could jump and uh, put your drawings in front of you or behind you by basically just clicking on on what you want and then right clicking on it and then sending it to the front or draw order send it to the back again it's up to you how do you do that but that is the same exact tool that you see over here bring to front send to back bring above just click on it right click draw order bring to front send to back bring above so that's pretty much um, your advanced editing tools that all that you need to uh, do some advanced editing if you have any questions let me know